Good evening, it's Jeremy. It's Tuesday, November the 8th, and I'm just looking at the horizon from my balcony, looking east. There's the moon, it's a full moon. And up here, uh, we've got Jupiter. Now on Saturday, uh, November the 5th, I did a lunar distance measurement between Jupiter and the moon. I didn't take a video at that time, uh, but I wanted to take a video just to show you what it looked like. Now the purpose of taking lunars, when you measure the lunar distance, so I measured the distance from the center of Jupiter to the right hand limb of the moon. The purpose of doing that is to uh, figure out what the time is. So you don't have to have a, a timepiece that's set exactly to UTC or to um, uh, a very accurate uh, standard. Uh, for instance, when Joshua Slocum um, navigated around the world, he used lunars for his navigation and just used an old tin clock. So anyways, that's what the, uh, the moon in Jupiter looks like. And I took my sextant and I turned it at an angle. So um, basically it was um, uh, parallel to the line joining uh, the center of Jupiter uh, to the moon. And what I did is I pointed it at Jupiter and then I lowered it so the center of Jupiter just touched the right hand limb of the moon. So anyways, that's just a pic picture of what it looks like. And we're going to go and look at the blog post. Okay, so we're looking at the blog post now. And that's a picture of there's the uh, full moon and there's Jupiter there. So basically to measure the lunar distance, you use your sextant and you bring the uh, position of Jupiter down to the right hand limb of the moon. And... Um, I've got a little diagram of that here. So that's basically what you do. There's Jupiter and you bring it down so it's sitting right there. Now, um, here's the procedure for taking a lunar. So basically what you do is you measure the altitude of the moon, you measure the altitude of the celestial body, then you uh, record the, the uh, lunar distance between the center of the body and the limb of uh, the moon and then you measure the altitudes again and then you what you do is you interpolate uh, for the time if let's say t3 was the time you measured the lunar distance then you interpolate for those times <clears throat> and once you have that then you calculate ha for the moon and ha for the celestial body you've got your apparent lunar distance okay and then you can use the uh, spherical triangle uh, shown with the observer's zenith and you can use that to calculate your um, geocentric lunar distance and then what you do is you take your geocentric lunar distance and you go into a table of lunar distances and you can figure out your time so if your clock was off by quite a bit you can match what your uh, geocentric lunar distance was from the table and get a better time and reset your, your watch. So that's the whole idea behind lunars. What I've done here is I've just shown you, uh, Stellarium is a very useful program and you can use that to look at your night sky. So I've, I've got Stellarium, Stellarium set for my local uh, latitude and longitude. And I'm looking east here so you can see the moon and Jupiter there. Another program which I really love is Navigational Algorithms. It does absolutely everything and it can create tables of lunar distances for you, which is really uh, uh, really quite handy. So that's the same idea looking. Um, that's the stars and planets visible on um, uh, November the 5th at 1929 DST or 2329 um, UTC. So here what I'm doing is I'm calculating what the semi-diameter of the moon is uh, at the Earth's surface. You need that to add that. You're, you're going to measure your observed lunar distances between the center and the, um, the right limb of the moon. You've got to add the semi-diameter there to get the apparent lunar distance. So these are the measurements I took. I took three measurements. This was the best one. Uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't measured lunars for a while, so I'm, I'm going to take the last measurement I took. I was pretty careful with that one. My index error um, was zero degrees. Normally it's around plus or two, plus two or plus five minutes off, but for whatever reason it was zero. Temperature was is quite hot, it was 20 degrees centigrade. So that was the semi-diameter at the surface was 15.76. That's my latitude and longitude. I used the latitude and longitude and the exact time to calculate HA as I mentioned because I don't have a water horizon. 
So that's a picture of the spherical triangle you use to calculate the geocentric lunar distance. That's your zenith point. This is where the moon is um, really, and this is where it appears to be. And that's where the celestial body is really, and that's where it is, uh, where it appears to be. Here's um, a table of the um, Greenwich hour angle and declination for the moon and Jupiter from the nautical and almanac, and I checked it with uh, navigational algorithms. So here's a calculation of HC and azimuth for the moon, calculation of HC and azimuth for Jupiter. So I'm working out the refractions there. That's the PA for the moon. This is the calculation uh, from the um, from the spherical triangle there. I'm calculating the apparent lunar distance there. And uh, there I'm calculating the geocentric lunar distance. So here's the table. So there's my HC, and I can use HC to calculate HA. If this was, uh, let's say I had a, a water horizon, then this would be HS, and I would re reduce the uh, sextant sighting to HA. I'm just using HC out of convenience because I don't have the water horizon. Same thing for Jupiter, there's HA. So you plug in HA uh, for the moon and Jupiter and the apparent lunar distance. You plug that into a, 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 a spherical triangle and you get the... Um, a calculated lunar distance, which is down here, geocentric lunar distance calculated, 14, 19.8. These are the, um, uh, this was the calculated apparent lunar distance, and that was my measured, so I was off, my, I made an error of one minute. So as I mentioned uh, before, here's, um, we can use navigational algorithms to plot a table of lunar distances. What I've got here is this is the lunar distance. It turns out to be the same value as I calculated, a geocentric one, but you can bracket them. That's the uh, lunar distance at, uh, let's say, 2300 UTC, and that's 00, 00 UTC. So uh, what you could do actually is you could interpolate between, let's say, this hour and that hour and figure out where you are. So. That's how you can match your um, calculated geocentric lunar distance and get your time. So that's basically the method. Uh, in my uh, in my ebook here, I go through um, a lot of exercises using lunars, and I actually go and actually measure altitudes. I also have an exercise where I use the Stark tables. The Stark tables are really good. Uh, basically, you can with pen and paper. You can do all the calculations. You don't have to have any fancy uh, uh, programs or anything else to get a result. So it's, it's a very it's a very good method.